blinded by the light. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today we shall be doing an unboxing review of the FL Sun T1, the smaller brother to the S1. Let's dive right in. It is a big flat box, nowhere near as big as the box of his bigger brother, which looked like a tomb. Ooh. I love the way that FL Sun always pat their printers. Oh. Stay. We shall dispose of cardboard, polystyrene slab. I shall rotate and start laying out the contents of the box on the table beside. Camera. Screen. Lots of tiny screws. Filament. FL Sun manual. Plastic parts. Service policy. An extruder. A piece of machinery. Another piece of machinery. We are very quickly going to run out of room. I do wish, FL Sun, if you are watching this video, please make finger holes to get your thing fingers down to actually be able to remove the things that you've put in the polystyrene encasement. It does not want to come out. So in here, we have a box of tools and a USB, a nozzle, piece of PTFE tube and looks like a pneumatic coupler. Sellotape to the lid, very sharp needle. Piece of metal, another piece of metal, a power lead, perspex panels, more polystyrene, a leg, another leg, we, and another leg with a light. As you can see from the contents of the, the packaging, there are quite a number of parts, so I shall have to consult the manual to see where we begin this epic journey. I'm going on an adventure! Right, I shall move some parts out of the way to give us more room during this construction process. This part here with the CPAP lead and whatnot is the top. It is mentioning a filament holder. These parts labeled 11 are the filament holder. What we'll do is we'll start the screws off in the hole. Just a couple of turns, mind you. Don't go mad. And I would advise when doing this, just be careful not to drop screws inside. There is a little lug just located on the bottom of this and there's a little cutout in the metalwork slide out like so so now we can nip those down this thing give me jingaby okay novel but it says filament holder installation complete so we shall move this part for now and it's asking us to put the base on the table place the bottom shell on the table take out the main wiring which i assume will be this harness here so on the end of this We've got a 90 degree USB-C connector and a serial connector. Okay, so now we need to try and figure out which one of these is the X axis. I would hope they are labeled. So the X axis is the one with the hinge X axis. So looking at this, the stepper motor goes up. It is now asking about the Y axis. So this has a little cable here and we have the opposing end here. So that one just drops into there and then this one in there. So it would now like us oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to poppy this on top. So just looking at this, there's a USB-C connector and a serial connector. So that wants to be over in that corner. Just be careful when you're putting this into position. We don't want to be trapping any wires. We have not trapped any wires. So next, we're going to put a million and one screws in, all by hand. And basically, we have four holes, and they're on every post, top and bottom. We need to basically fill every one. It might be a good time to cut here, and you can rejoin me once I've finished. Five minutes later. So just for the record, M33 grub screws, very, very small. And on the extruder, we've got two holes on each pivot point. I will come and do a close-up. Okay, so the inside hole is the screw. The outside hole is the grub screw. Inside hole is the main screw. Outside hole, the grub screw. Repeat this on all three sides. Don't put the screws all the way in. Literally two turns just to start them off. And I shall show you why shortly. Just take your time on doing this because it would be very easy just to cross-thread these. It's only screwing into aluminium. So you want to make sure that the threads are lined up and you want to be looking down the hole making sure that that screw does not protrude into that hole at this point in time grub screw larger screw so this little bag is labeled isolation column 
basically what is in here is a little metal bush a very small cylinder that goes over a pin the pin has a flat on it the flat wants to be pointing up so that when you tighten these screws down these screws tighten onto the flat this might be a bit tricky to film I shall start by removing some tape. Now this is where you're going to need to be a wizard. It's got lots of movie cuts in this one. That's a wizard, Harry. You're a wizard. Steve. I'm a what? Isolation column onto this little pin, like so. Little pin, you see how the flat on there it wants to be facing up. So this slots onto there. Then it's asking me to be a contortionist and tighten down that little grub screw onto that flat to start with. And then repeat. It's a very tight spring. Way. Snuck those down. That's the grub screws tightened. We shall swap my bit and then just nip down the other two. That was very tricky, to say the least. But needless to say, we shall proceed. It's very boring watching me do this. So we'll cut there while I get the rest of these done and we'll come straight back. Five minutes later. So once you've completed that previous step, this is what you should be looking like so the extruder is now fitted to the arms so the next thing is connecting this jiggery pokery so this is the CPAP cooling and this is the main wiring plug that plugs into the extruder so just carefully arrange your wires first onto the back push fit the CPAP until it meets the little flange that's there next you have this which plugs into the back of the extruder so pop that into place and then we're securing this down by the two little holes in the top don't over tighten these because you'll crack the the plastic you just snug them down camera it is a camera so in the case there's a little nick a little cut out there is a little tiny mark on the base here with a camera icon and a little rubber cover usb socket from there so that's where the camera plugs in so here that is where the camera clips to it's now asking us to just plug in these two cables i'm just gonna try and feed the excess back into the hole just so everything's neat and tidy so next it's asking us to plug in all of these all of these things up here so we've got all these cables dangling down the cables that are black green red and blue will plug into the large connector and then the other cable is basically the limit switch so we just repeat that on all four. So that's that part done. So it's asking us now to remove one, two, three screws from this cover plate. Now, I'm assuming that is so we can route the cable away. We have removed a cover. The cable, very, very carefully insert said cable up the channel where you've just removed the cover from. And I'll just come around to the front so I can see the hole that I'm about to plug it into. So in the top, You've got the serial connector and you've got the USB-C connector. I will plug those in. It does take a little bit of manipulation. Just be very careful when you do that because the top edge is quite tight on those wires and you don't want to be shearing through the plastic sheeting on the, on the cables. Okay, so it's asking us to pop this over so it slots in the screen. So the screen is basically attached with this very, very thin ribbon cable. So basically the blue edge in here there's a little flap gently lift the flap up you then carefully locate the ribbon cable into there like so so it's now asking us to install metal braces so that is these this is very fiddly braces installed so these are sad panels so what i'm going to do first is it has got protective film on if i don't peel this off at this point i will not get it off so as you can see the panel just has two holes the holes line up with the braces that we've just fitted and we secure those in place don't over tighten these at all because you will crack the perspex literally snug them down top and bottom there's a little plastic lever which you then twist to just lock the top and bottoms into place making that side of the enclosure enclosed the middle piece be very careful because that is glass so i shall leave that there peel off the film for the other one okay make sure you got it the right way up moving on to the glass gaskets what i would suggest is get your little gasket pop it into the hole okay door next it is but to install the handle 
but from the opposite side. I've put that in there. We have power. Okay, so we've completed the assembly. Now we shall go through the first setup. So we're on English start. I'm going to skip the Wi-Fi part for now. Self-inspection. Please place the printing platform. The printing platform is already placed. Self-inspection takes about six minutes. So we're going to hit next. Now would be a very, very, very good time to flick on the kettle and make yourself a caffeine fueled cup of coffee. Ooh. Approximately six minutes or so later, the self-inspection completed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to loading some filament. So the bar that we installed, pop that out. Now what I'm noticing, there's a difference here between this and the other, the other model. The S1 came fitted with a reverse bolding tube right away to the extruder. This doesn't. We only have a little short bolding tube. And then I'm noticing in the actual cable management, there's some guides. Feed the filament through the guides, put the, the extruder down to the base of the machine. It'll make feeding it through these little things a lot easier. And then I'm just going to pop that into the extruder. Just purge that through twice. Just for the record, I am using eSun High Speed PLA Plus. I want a filament that's going to flow quickly and keep up with the demand of the printer. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to look on print and have a look what we have. First off, I'm going to hit Benchy. We have the options on the print menu, vibration compensation, bed leveling, and time lapse. If we wanted to do any of those, then we just click them, highlight them. For the purpose of this video, we're not going to do that. I will do it on some other prints that we'll slice files for and print, which will be appearing on screen anytime now. So we're with this one, we shall just proceed to print. Drint, benchy, no, yes. So drint means print. So I'm gonna click yes, shut the door and see what happens. Just for the purpose of the video, I hope you can hear the noise. That is a CPAP cooling fan. This machine would not be recommended to use in your office. First thoughts, we do have a few little artifacts along the print. A tiny bit of stringing, but ultimately everything is present and correct. Obviously take into account that this is like a, a 10 minute banshee. For the speed that it's just printed that in, I would say that that was acceptable quality of something that's printing at that speed. Slicing software, so it comes with its own FL Sun slicer, but you can remotely send files. You can also remotely monitor by the, the camera. That's a, a handy addition to have. The build volume. The overall diameter of the build plate is 260 millimeters. If you were going to print a square object, you would not be able to print a square object at 260 millimeters because portions of it would overhang the build plate. The Z height, maximum Z height printing volume of 330 millimeters. Can only print to 290 millimeters due to the delta design so basically because of the way the extruder is you can't print to the full height because the delta head will move around and the lowest point that it can get to will be 290. so i think the best way to explain this is if you imagine the top of the build volume as almost a dome so in the center you'll be able to print at the full build volume and then around the edges you'll be able to print at 290 millimeters back to steve the build plate will heat to a temperature of 110 degrees. The maximum print speed of the machine is claimed to be 1,000 millimetres a second. The Benchy was proof of that. I saw it accelerate and print at points at 1,000 millimetres a second. You've got a dual gear direct drive extruder that comes pre-fitted with a brass nozzle. You've got a textured PEI flexible removable build plate. You have the CPAP turbo fan. The reason for this is because it's machine is printing so fast it needs to cool the print extremely fast otherwise you'll end up with a soggy mess you've also got a 4.3 inch touchscreen display and you have an active carbon filter so if you're going to be printing with abs or anything you want to filter fumes out with this has it built in so in summary assembly for the machine out of the box as you saw, isn't a quick and easy job. I'm fairly experienced in assembling 3D printers. This, to a beginner, would be very, very fiddly. And all I would recommend is that you take your time. It would be very, very easy, in my opinion, to break something or trap a wire, which would result in a damaged machine. As long as you take your time and you 
probably read over the instructions a few times just to familiarize yourself before you just dive straight in time wise i would probably allow a good maybe three or four hours really to sit and take your time over assembling the machine to make sure everything's right and done properly before you run the test prints the noise aspect this would not be the ideal machine if you wanted to print in your office or in your bedroom the size of it is quite compact i mean it wouldn't take up a huge lot of room and you could quite easily have it on a good solid shelf or whatever provided adequate clearance above the machine for the cpap to draw air in but if you wanted to work or sleep in the same room that you have this print in you stand no chance and so please take that into account the touchscreen display again is very responsive it's nice and clear there is a couple of typos and whatever on on the ui but you can navigate around what you need to for anyone who's in the market for a delta printer this is definitely worth a consideration i hope you've enjoyed this video please do not forget to like and subscribe the link for this product is in the description for our website and if you've got any questions please do not forget to leave them in the comments box below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Hope you've enjoyed watching. Goodbye for now. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.